When tasked with exploring Montana's megaliths, an expert team of operatives was chosen. Mike Collins. Sammy Lee. Dave Vossel. Will Israel. And of course, yours truly. The day after visiting Sage Wall, a handful of us were selected to visit the Tizer Dolmen. This is our story. Hi, my name is Dan and welcome to Dunking. Well, like I just said, I recently went to Montana and checked out the Sage Wall and the Tizer Dolmen, among other things there. but. We're going to talk about the Tizer Dolman this time, and we'll talk about Sage Wall in about a month or so at the request of the property owner. Now, the one thing I want to talk about out the gate with the Tizer Dolman is there's a ton of dolmens in the area. There is all kinds of rocks that are stacked on top of each other in all kinds of goofy ways all over the region. So it's not, it's not crazy for somebody to say, ah, this is just natural. But if you actually take a little bit of time to investigate the Tizer Dolmen, you can see that there's a little bit more going on there than this. But to be very clear, it is easy to look around the area and to deduce how things went down. For example, here's Mike from Wandering Wolf discussing how the pink granite came to be. If you're aware of the site at all, there's a, in Devil's Playground, there's an area with some pink granite stones where everything else is kind of dark. What we're looking at here, this is a really unique spot out here on Giant's Playground. And these look really out of place, but they're actually not. What happened was all of these collapsed rock that's here used to be on the front. And um, how this is sitting back, all these rocks used to be attached here. And they fell off and just exposed this inner part of the rock. It looked exactly the same as this. You can see right here where it's exposed. And then Dan went around the back and the backside looks like all the rest. It's not pink. Basically what happened is this top piece fell David had a great point. It collapsed on top of it, and that's what caused the front of this to crack off and fall, landing here, and then exposed the center rock, which is pink, but not in the back. And you can see over here that if it happened to this one, it would look the same as well. I was there. And like you said, I checked out the backside. I prefer busts, but I'll check out rears too. Anyway, the point is, in this area, it is easy to look around and see how things went down, but this dolmen, it breaks that mold. It's on the side of a hill and there are no rocks above it anywhere nearby. And the stone on top, it just looks a whole lot different than the split pillar that it rests on, which is abnormal. When you look around and see how things happened, the appearance of the stones is one of the most robust and easy to identify lines of evidence. It looks like these two rocks were once joined, right? Well, the top stone, it fails this test hands down. It looks like it fell there or was placed there deliberately and that makes it something of a mystery. And since you probably read the title of this video, you know my intention here is to solve this mystery, and I think I have. So let's start with the mundane lines of reasoning that you would get from a geologist. How would they explain a situation like this? Well, I have trouble talking to geologists, thanks to certain scientists that will remain nameless. I have a kind of a scorched earth thing going on when I go to talk to any other scientist, which is frustrating, but it is what it is. I can still read papers, and from the best that I can suss, the most normal uh, explanation for a dolmen like this would be glaciers. Glaciers carry rocks, which are known as glacial erratics, and they'll often be deposited in haphazard ways. Now, personally, I still find this a little bit of a stretch. I don't think glaciers did this, but that doesn't really matter because no glaciers were said to have been in that region during the last ice age, during the last glacial maximum, which ended about 10,000, 12,000 years ago. So either this dolmen stood after being stacked further back in prehistory, withstanding whatever megafauna lived in the region for tens of thousands of years, never losing the top rock to an earthquake, animal, or human activity, or perhaps geologists have another explanation? No surprise, they do. They claim that areas like this would be covered in a lot of dirt, basically, that the rocks were under dirt for a long time and erosion slowly happened and during this process that rock was placed on top of this upright standing rock and then eventually they were eroded and completely exposed to the air. And I suppose this is possible but I still find this pretty hard to believe as if you look at the thing first of all the way that it's positioned there's a scoop in the front there's a very rounded section in the front you can see there and it 
It's not the only one in the area that has an upright standing stone like this that has that scooped out region in the front. And it kind of looks to me like it was a, a way to facilitate them standing the, the stone up. Now, perhaps the stone was that way and it, it just formed that way, but this, it, it, at any rate, the way that it's scooped out in the front there does look like if the, it, it, it looks like it would be easy to push it over, okay? It looks like a few guys with like a, a, some serious tr trying could knock that thing down. So it seems to me like the, I think erosion would, would is unlikely and because I think it would have knocked over the main upright pillar. Which, by the way, really quickly, that upright pair of pillars is clearly one stone originally, like I said earlier, but let, let's get that out of the way. This is all over the region. Rocks are split in very straight patterns because the granite has a shitload of crystal in it. It's a ton of quartz, so it splits in very... Well, we all know how crystal works, right? It doesn't, I don't mean the guy on the street corner crystal works. I mean the way that crystals work as far as they break in straight lines. That's, that's what I'm getting at here. Now, there are a lot of explanations that you could bring in. I've heard all kinds of explanations from giants to aliens to spiritual stuff to um, one of the guys there, David. Uh, he had a pretty good uh, explanation, pretty good idea. He said that it could have been a signal fire, a place for a signal fire because it would be visible from a couple other areas. Now, Will, he trounces around that area quite a lot, and he said it doesn't think that he doesn't think that it would work for a signal fire because it wouldn't be visible except for, for a few places in that immediate vicinity. It's kind of nestled in a little valley there. And that got me thinking maybe it was for a signal fire, just for the immediate location and not for long distances. Maybe it was just a place to store game or to store food so that other animals couldn't get it. I mean, all the trees that are nearby, it seemed pretty young. So it's quite possible you just clear the trees from around the area and then you put your food up there and then you keep it away from the bears and stuff. There is a lot of wildlife in that area. It's beautiful out there, by the way. But at any rate, it does seem more likely to me personally that this was built made by human hands than it was naturally formed. In this one area, there are tons of areas, again, that are clearly natural this spot right here we'll talk about a little bit more now this is the part where i'm going to piss off a lot of you who want some high-tech answer and i hope that this shows everyone that i'm trying to figure this shit out reasonably and with all the evidence in hand not just trying to find the answer that would get the most clicks or be the most satisfying to my audience i mean just look at the site now imagine that you had 10 people in your immediate family that you could call on to help and you were told that you'd get a million dollars if you put a rock on top of those upstanding pillars, imagine there was no rock on top. How would you do it? Would you stack earth between the top of the hill, like the upside of the hill and the pillar, uh, until you could like push a rock to the top of the pillar and then clear that dirt away? Because that's what I do. Um, and I know that's not very high tech, but it's, it's a very realistic, very reasonable thing. Um, if you were tasked with putting a rock up there, that's, that's something that's not unreal un impossible <laughs> whatever word it is that i'm looking for you choose but it's not something that would be that insanely hard to do it's something that we that anybody could feasibly do if they had enough access to enough people to help them so it seems most likely to me that that's what happened here now this is where we would like to get some science in because they could detect Hypothetically, they could detect if the trees had been cleared from that area a long time ago or if a bunch of dirt had been stacked there and cleared out. Because there are things that you could look at and see with your own naked eyes. Like, if you look at the stone itself, there's a rock in the back of the upright pillar. It's very obvious that that slid down and smacked into the back of the pillar. You can look in the front and see a piece that pretty obviously fell off the front. It's not hard to imagine that stone sliding down the hill, smacking into that pillar and knocking off a piece in the front and splitting it down the center where it was already starting to fracture. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that was done by a human trying to stack a bunch of dirt so they could put a rock on top of that thing as a place to store games, start a signal fire, who knows what, stand up there and talk to all the other people in the area. I mean, if it would make a very commanding location to preach to the locals if you had them standing down at the bottom of that hill you would be literally in the clouds above them i mean you'd be way up there but still able to yell down at them so there's a lot of reasons that this thing could exist and i know that this is less fun than it, it being built by giants or being the product of geopolymers but this just tracks right i mean you just look at it and it just tracks now, in order to prove this, or the geologist hypothesis, or any of the other less mainstream ideas, we will need unbiased work done at the site. 
like I said, signs of the earth ramp I mentioned, or signs of erosion, leaving the top intact. You know, there's all kinds of evidence that could be found that would help us determine the origins. But as it is, personally, I think the site's pretty enigmatic. It's uncanny in a way that requires explanation. It does not defy explanation, but to me it does require explanation. And personally, I think human agency is the most likely culprit for what put that stone there. As I said, there's a number of reasons why. But there is one other thing to mention that is possibly very important and pertinent to this whole mess. And this was found by Will Israel. Let me just talk about that guy for a second. He's a little Billy Badass over here. Um, I got a lot of respect for Will having just met him. Um, for one thing, he, he has spent a lot of time work, walking around and trouncing the area. He really enjoys it and stuff. It's good for his soul. He is a uh, army ranger or was an army ranger, a, a, a combat vet. Um, he is a recovered Mormon, which um, that's, you, you know, if it, for those of you familiar with, uh, you know, those kinds of religions, and sorry to any Mormons who watch me, but for those of you who are familiar with those kinds of religions, it can be very difficult to get out of something where your entire social network is tied up with um, this, with your religion. So, um, and he kept his family intact. Him and his wife navigated that clearly, obviously soul searching, difficult moment and walked out of it with an intact family. I, I, I have to say, I'm fucking impressed, man. So, all right, having tooted Will's horn, um, I, 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 no homo, um, maybe a little, but um, anyway, <laughs> the thing that he brought up that's really interesting to me is the way that these sites in the area are laid out on this app that he uses to hunt. I forget the name of it, but I'll put it here. And the, just, those of you who are interested in those kinds of things can probably recognize it right by the screenshots. Now these sites seem to be laid out deliberately, Ringing Rocks, Sage Wall, Tizer Dolman, and other sites in the area that are popular or that Will has pointed out, um, they, they seem to be laid out in a regular pattern. And this is pretty odd, and it's caused Will to make a prediction. He believes that something to note will be found in this region here, about seven and a half miles seems to be the distance between the sites, and this spot would fill the gap. Now I intend to go back this summer and talk to Will some more with any luck and uh, go and look around a little bit and maybe maybe we can see if, if what he found there is accurate or not. I want to check out those ringing rocks. I, there's more, more stuff to do there. Now that I've had a chance to look at the site, it's not too terribly far from me. I, I mean, it's, I drove there in, in like six hours, so it's not that bad. Um, and it was a lot of fun. It's very interesting. And as it is, I personally think that... Um, we're not going to get a whole lot of good evidence either direction on this stuff right now. The geology in the region is focused on mining for obvious reasons. It's, it's what the fucking region is known for. I mean, hell, a bunch of streets, I think it was Butte itself, a bunch of the streets were, or it was a town right near, near it. Um, but the streets had names that were like platinum, lead, uh, uh, uranium, silver, gold. It's just like, okay, gotcha. We mine here. There's a, a mine in Butte that you could see from a ways away that is just gigantic where it's just an open pit mine it's, it's gorgeous you can see the different colors of rock and stuff there but you can see where they're the geology in that region is not very concerned with whether or not that dolmen was created naturally and the people that are alternate historians that go out there well i mean you get alternate history ideas and that's not a bad thing as a matter of fact it's a good thing they're the ones that have brought it basically to our attention but in my opinion, a lot of times the alternate historians, they start from a spot and kind of work their way down. And, and I like to start from the bottom and work my way up. Um, as Flint would say, from work from the known into the unknown. The difference is, is that you have to accept that the unknown could actually fucking exist if you want that whole methodology to work, Flint. Anyway, having said that, I want to thank you very much for watching. I am absolutely getting ready to cover the King's List first, and I will be talking about carbon dating as well, and more stuff that Zahi Hawass just shit the bed on. But I wanted to get this out because I had a really good time. Well, I don't want to just talk about Egyptology. I want to talk about all kinds of stuff. And this site is really interesting, and personally, I, I think I've got it sussed. So, thank you very much for watching, and I really appreciate the support, you guys. I wouldn't be able to go do shit like this if it wasn't for the support that I get from you guys. For the support on Patreon, for the support on uh, just being a channel member, for the support of just watching the dang videos. I'm going to be at the Cosmic Summit here in just a few weeks. You should come check it out. It's going to be tremendous. Love to see you there. Shake your hand, have a beer, and we can get in a bar fight. Maybe even two. Thanks very much. Have a good night.